Let's uh, continue our equation manipulation, developing our equation manipulation skills, um, again using the Archie relationship. Um, the, the equations that um, we work with in formation evaluation um, are, you know, require us to work with uh, uh, powers and logarithms and um, so they provide a good uh, set of relationships for us to explore and make sure we we can understand how we get from point A to point B. Uh, we're going to um, uh, work with uh, different forms of the Archie relationship and uh, for water saturation and perhaps in the next video we'll get into the hydrocarbon index and uh, uh, <clears throat> residual hydrocarbon uh, saturation. But like um, any subject, um, there are a lot of different terms that are used in formation evaluation, and uh, and they vary from one publication to another. And the subscripts and and so on can can be kind of confusing. So you almost have to, you know, when you sit down and you start reading through. So material, you almost have to make a list and a list of the terms that you're you're um, <clears throat> working with, and make sure that you you are um, connecting the the dots uh, correctly, because uh, they may change from one publication to another. And, and I also note some good uh, references here. I think um, Archie's um, seminal paper, you know, back in 1942, which kind of forms the basis for a lot of this. Uh, 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 formation evaluation work and and uh, the basic well log analysis course uh, th offered through AEPG and their methods in exploration series number 16 by Asquith and Krigowski. Uh, it also has a nice uh, uh, DVD that goes along with that. And um, Labo is or Labo is um, also presents a very thorough. Introduction to Borehole Geophysics as part of the SEG Geophysical Reference Series. So I think, you know, tomorrow what we're doing today is sometimes out of date, but uh, you still see Archie's paper referred to, and as far as the things that we're going to be talking about, these are all good uh, references for um, related to formation evaluation. So, so you know, just, just as kind of a reminder of where we've been and what we've been looking at, we have the, uh, you know, from Archie's uh, paper, the basic relationship that the formation factor, something called the formation factor, is uh, related, inversely related to the porosity, uh, the formation porosity. And this is, you know, of course, if we're interested in, you know, finding hydrocarbon bearing zones, we would certainly like to have good good porosity, right? So this term is important to determine, and um, uh, Archie expresses this formation factor in terms of a ratio of two resistivities, um, written here as the bulk, true, or whole rock resistivity, I'll use the subscript B, and the resistivity of the fluid contained in the pore space. Uh, Use a subscript F here for for that. Now, since we're interested in the porosity, we can rearrange this equation over here and solve directly for the porosity. And this is something that you should be able to do. Um, and we did that, and we found that um, the porosity, in terms of these two resistivities, would be equal to this uh, constant, which is. Um, refers to, well, in the in the pore system, if you want to get from point A to point B, is it fairly much a uh, direct path, or is it a fairly circuitous one, where you uh, kind of wind your way around a country road, let's say, as opposed to a modern interstate highway. So A is referred to as a tortuosity factor, and it ranges between 0.5 and 1.5 times this uh, uh, ratio, uh, the uh, fluid resistivity to the whole rock resistivity. Raised to the 1 over m power, uh, m is a cementation factor, 
and it has values that range from about 1 to 4. And as an example of something which is completely uncemented, uh, an unconsolidated sand, for example, would have a M value of about 1.3. So obviously, these <clears throat> These, these values probably vary A and M vary from um, one type of uh, rock to another, whether you're working with sandstone or limestone. And uh, the type of cement and uh, the degree of cementation and uh, so on. So, so these are the equations that should look familiar to you. Uh, <clears throat> we can also work with resistivities that come from near or the well bore. So you've drilled a well, you've, uh, you have drilling mud, the drilling mud has uh, diffused, been pushed into the surrounding formation, producing an invaded zone. So we have mud filtrate, uh, that would be the fluid component, the liquid component of the drilling mud. It's a resistivity, and then we have the resistivity of the invaded zone, which is uh, a zone where the drilling mud has influenced the resistivity of the rock. But we can still get the porosity uh, from an Archie, from the Archie relationship, except in this case we're using the ratio of the mud filtrate to the, resisti the resistivity of the mud filtrate to the resistivity of the invaded zone. And we've just uh, replaced R sub F and R sub B, uh, which, which are measured in regions far enough from the well bore that the resistivities are uninfluenced by the drilling operation. With the near borehole values, R sub M F and R sub I, for the mud fluid, or the mud filtrate, uh, the liquid component of the drilling mud, and the uh, kind of the bulk resistivity, but of the invaded zone. So in this sketch, uh, you'll find a lot better sketches online and so on. This is just a crude schematic just to um, <clears throat> kind of ground us in some, some notation. So this, this is going to be the resistivity of the drilling mud. Um, we have the invaded zone here. This is where um, the drilling, the the the, the drilling fluids have been pushed into the um, uh, formation to a certain distance. And this whole rock resistivity in this region is referred to the, as the resistivity in the invaded zone with a subscript I. And then we also have the fluid component, um, <clears throat> the mud filtrate, R sub M F. We also have a transition zone where we kind of gradually go from this zone of invasion uh, into the uninvaded um, surrounding formation. Uh, so we'd have a resistivity, which would be R sub TR, the transition zone. And then we have the uh, bulk whole rock resistivity, or the true resistivity, and we have the fluid resistivity. Here. So, so just just kind of a general uh, backdrop or framework for some of the notation that we're going to be going to be seeing. I'd also note is that um, we use capital R. Uh, the log analysts often use capital R for resistivity, but in geophysics and phys physics, when we're working with ele electrical resistivity discussions, we we often use the symbol row instead of uh, R. So so if this is new to you, um, just think of R as the resistivity. and uh, It's more of a fundamental property of the uh, fluid or the rock. So obviously we're interested in water saturation uh, because we assume, well, we're hunting for hydro hydrocarbons. So um, how much of the pore space is saturated with water is an important question to um, to answer. And um, uh, because we assume the rest of it has uh, hydrocarbons, oil, gas, uh, in the pore space. So the water saturation in the invaded zone, we can state in terms of 
the product of the formation factor times the ratio of the mud filtrate, the resistivity of the mud filtrate to the resistivity in the invaded zone, raised to the um, 1 over n power, and this is a saturation, referred to as a saturation exponent, and it's often close to 2. Uh, you'll also see this um, uh, saturation <coughs> in the invaded zone written as S sub i to the n power. And that just, we've kind of multiplied both sides, or raised both sides to the power n, and we express it in this, in this form. So you you'll probably run into, into this. But we'll come back here and note also that the water saturation in the uninvaded zone, out beyond the, which is really what we're interested in, we can use this to give us a, a, a kind of a reference or a benchmark value. Um, but the water saturation in the region beyond the well bore is uninfluenced by the uh, drilling. So. This is a, a, a term which we're also interested in. So, uh, so a, an exercise for you, a problem for you, is to use algebraic manipulation to develop a formula showing the relationship of porosity to saturation of the invaded or the flushed zone. So, in other words, rearrange this equation and solve it for the porosity. So we know that we're going to multiply both sides by phi to the m power. We're going to divide both sides by the uh, saturation in the uh, invaded zone raised to the nth power. And, then, and uh, so take a moment and uh, work through that. And if you did, then you would, starting from this point, we would multiply both sides by phi to the n, as I mentioned, and divide both sides by s i to the nth power, and then raise both sides to the 1 over m power. So here we have phi sub m over on this side, s sub i sub n over here in the um, denominator now, and we want to get rid of the m, the, the uh, power here, so, so we end up with the porosity being equal to uh, a over the uh, saturation in the invaded zone to the nth power times the ratio of the two resistivities, and all of this raised to the 1 over m power. And, and we, we should also note that the same will be true for the uninvaded zone. So we will replace mud filtrate with the resistivity of the water, or the, I should have put F, subscript F. So you can see where the notation there is. You, you kind of have to keep your antennae up. And uh, the ratio of the, of the fluid to the, uh, the resistivity of the fluid to the, to the whole rock resistivity. So, so we have these two forms of this uh, relationship here and there. They're going to be different, and the differences between them tell us something about the hydrocarbon saturation. Okay. Um, so next time, I, I, I think we'll wait until next time to look at the uh, hydrocarbon saturation and uh, uh, the ratio of those two saturations uh, to get this term here. So thanks for uh, joining us. See you next time.